Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going medieval with these three medieval destiny character builds for those who want to bring back the fury of the gods. I'm going to cover up all three classes with their unique takes while also sticking to a theme to make them easily picked out of if you ever come across them in PvE or PvP. So let's get started. Our first build will focus on a seemingly popular setup that many players have chosen over time when they want to feel a bit evil at times. The Necromancer build is a common loadout you will see with players who love weapon or sorrow builds and this one here is nothing different to what we normally do. Using the strand and the quad grip, we can build into making our mini hits proc lethal poison that can spread to others times 10 over while also summoning our minions to overwhelm them and recruit them into our everyday needs. For this, you're going to want to invest in the Threadlings and your midi, so having a high recovery, discipline and strength will be key to your power. A tier 7 for strength and discipline with a front of focus and vigor mod will push our stats up to a tier 10 once we get our armor charges going, and then having a tier 8 recovery with Weaver's Call and Mind Spun will fix the key aspects to what you really want to lean into. Expanding on this with Thread of Fury, Generation and Evolution will also make the build more compatible for the user. This is one of the most easiest areas to expand, but abilities aren't everything. You'll need weapons if you want to make an impact, so having the Monarch and Fimposypes will change the build for the better. Monarch pairs well with the poison setup we already have, so the constant damage poison effect lingering is going to really put a hurt into our enemies. Our sword has the ability to create threadings as well, so when using our bow isn't enough, we can get our hands dirty up close. Having a primary that has threadling as shown is also recommended for the build, since we can acknowledge this as some mystical effect. Once you have the main ingredients together, you'll get a nice but highly viable necromancer build that has the look to support it. Its poison effect along with its summoning ability makes it perfect for crowd control and also has some level of viability to be used in end game if you wish. Now if you prefer a character that's both good and bad, then going full assassin will be your calling. Using stealth to get up close and personal, or using stealth to take out targets from a farm, both options offer players the ability to play their own way. With how strong stealth is for the hunters, you're going to want to heavily invest into this so you can make a certain deadly engagements against bosses or players an absolute nightmare. So to make this work, you're going to need to invest into your mobility and strength stat as high as possible, while also keeping your intelligence stat fairly high as well. Having the front of Vigor and Focus mod for our two abilities will push our Discipline to tier 10 and Strength to tier 7 once armor charges are active. You're also going to want to add the Distribution mod for its wide effect for all of our abilities. Although my abilities are tier 4, this will be boosted via our two aspects which is Vancing Step and Trapper's Ambush. Further adding on to this, we have Echo Obscurity, extending our invis when using our finisher, and having the Echo Provision Fragment will grant melee energy when damaging targets with our grenades. I recommend you use Magnetic Grenades as they have a low cooldown rate and can be used quite often. The main kill of the build though is using our Exotic Chest Piece, which will extend our Spectral Blade duration upon activating our heavy attack. This with a tier 7 or 10 intellect and using Echo of Prizal will allow us to utilize our super not only on a high basis, but also make full use of the invis you'll be cloaked with. Now weapons are down to the user, but recommended wise having the Wish Ender, Void Glaive and Void Sword will make the build flexible up close or from afar. Wish Ender hits hard and is perfect to be used against generally anything you have in mind. Our Void Staff will grant us good close range melee effect to close the gap, while also having moderate range and protection if our invis is not enough. And then, Razor Edge is going to be the big hit when we need to take out mini bosses or group of battens fairly quickly. Once everything's set up, you can then go full on Hunter Goblin mode and relive the feeling of being a great assassin in Destiny's environment. You have the range, the damage, the stealth, and the looks for you to get in and out and do your business while no one else is watching. And if things do get heavy, then just activate your super and go from there. And lastly, we have the Silver Knight, designed for those with pure hearts and those who love to destroy things with a big, heavy sword and hammer. This build will require users to get into the heat of the fights and use your sword to outright obliterate targets from where you stand. With Solar Subclass on hand, you can use this to both enhance your damage and recover health with the right combo, of course. Since the majority of our defense is coming from Stronghold, you'll have free reign when it comes down to how high your resilience stack can be. We have ours at tier 7 with Front of Endurance mod for that tier 10 stat buff once charged with light. 
This would give you a 30% damage reduction on top of our exotic to make it safe to be able to be used up close and personal. This is the same with Strength and Discipline with their given front mods to enhance our stat further, but also have a relatively high recovery stat that will be combined with our two aspects, Soul Invictus and Raw and Flame. Sunspots will be common when using a weapon that applies Scorch, so ideally this should go the same with fragments being used to enhance this further. Ember of Eruption, Ember of Searing, Ember of Shah, and Ember of Ashes will greatly benefit the user and push our base damage to an even higher level than before. Weapons are the standard bow, glaive and sword, but ideally your glaive and sword will play the biggest part. Lubre's Ruin is a fantastic solo glaive from the Val Raid with decent base stats and a good overall effectiveness when dealing with damage and protecting the user. Our sword however is the legendary throne cleaver with incandescent on it, and honestly this weapon feels more like a miniature nuke when using the heavy attack. Adding the Luke and Blade mod for this build will greatly improve how often you can use this attack over and over again. This here will clear rooms, clear players, and easily clear bosses, and if you get the same ball that I have, you'll be set for life. Once you're given goals of each, you'll have a true fantasy based knight that can be a hero to the people or villain if you desire. Great for a lot of content, and with his survivability greatly expanded into your weapons, I see no reason why you wouldn't give this build a try. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoy the build's breakdown. If you have any thoughts or opinions on the content shared, then please leave a comment below, while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub bar here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, and if you want more stuff like this, then I have a player's available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, I hope to see you again soon.